Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence. And in today's video, I am going to show you how to explain your reach classifier model. So in the last video, I created a reach classifier model. And here I call that reach classifier model RGC. So RGC is the variable where I stored my reach classifier model. So if you see me re using RGC in today's video, that is where it came from. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. But before we do that, um, let's look at the documentation for rich classifier. And if you look at the documentation for rich classifier, these are the attributes. And um, with scikit learn documentation, if you see attributes, just think of it as things you have access to after you have put your data set through the model and one of the attributes here is the coefficient and this is the coefficient of the features in the decision function so just think of it as the coefficient of a regression model and of course it does have an intercept and then you can also show you the number of classes and why would a classification model has a coefficient well, that's because um, the way this rich classifier works is that it takes um, the classifier target and um, turn it into a regression problem, right? So we have a coefficient instead of future importance. Usually in a classification problem, you end up with something called future importance. And if you watch my other videos about explaining random forest classification model or decision tree classification model i go into details about what future importance is but um in a regression problem we usually have coefficient but even though rich classifier is a classification library you still have coefficient because it works by converting your classification target into a regression problem so now that you have a little bit of background of where this is coming from, that you're about to use, let's go ahead and get started with the code. So here, if I do rgc.goof, wow, that's a lot, right? We have a lot of numbers here in our coefficient. So this is a multi-classification problem. That's why we have so many coefficients. I'm going to show you this exact same thing, but I'm going to show it to you right now with a binary classification. And then I'll come back to this multi-classification problem. So this is a binary classification problem that I did earlier. And just looking at this binary classification problem, when you do ROGC.goof for a binary classification, you get only one um, set of numbers and you, you get only one set of coefficients because you only have um, two classes. This is a binary class. All right. And if you do ROGC.classes, you get the classes. But if you are working with, with a binary classification problem, you get one set of coefficients. But if you're working in a multi-class classification problem like this one, you end up with multiple coefficients because of multiple classes. So if we do rgc.classes, so as you can see right here, we have seven classes in our target I mean, in our data set, in our data set, we ca it comes with seven different classes, right? So each one of these coefficients belongs to a particular class. So as you, if you count this, this is, there are seven of these. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we have seven coefficients for each class. And these numbers correspond to the columns. So if I go ahead and pull up my data frame my um if i do x train or s test it doesn't matter dot columns 
As you can see um, right here, these are the columns that we use in predicting the wine quality of this data set. So this data set is about predicting wine quality. This number right here um, corresponds with, like, let's say, fixed acidity. This number right here is the coefficient for volatile acidity. This number is um, the coefficient of citric acid, right? So looking at all three information together, you can kind of think of it as for class. Actually, let me go ahead and bring this up here to make it easier to read. All right. So for class number three, okay, this is the coefficient of fixed acidity. This is the coefficient of volatile acidity. This is the coefficient of citric acid. And for class number four, this is um, the coefficient of fixed acidity. You know, for like class number six, this is the coefficient. This right here is the coefficient of fixed acidity, so forth and so on. So that's kind of how you interpret your coefficient from a multi-class classification. But just looking at these numbers doesn't tell you much, right? If you're looking at these numbers and you're like, how do I know which features? How do I know which columns in my data frame has the most impact in predicting wine quality? It's going to be very difficult to extract that information just looking at this, all right? So to make this a little bit easier to visualize, we're just going to create a matplotlib visualization and we are going to pair up these columns with their corresponding coefficient and then we are going to create a bar graph from it so to do that let's first start by creating a panda series between our columns and coefficients so let's just call it go f is equal to rgc.go f and then we are going to say our columns is equal to s test dot columns. You can use your training data or your test data, it doesn't matter. And now we are going to create a panda series. Let's call it coefficient is equal to pd dot series. So pd stands for pandas. Earlier in this notebook, I did import pandas as pd. And the first thing you input is your coefficient, is your data. So in this case, coefficient at zero. So this right here is a Pandas series for class zero. I mean for class three, right? And we can do this for each um, of the classes. And let's see. The next thing you provide is your indexes, which is your columns. So if we go ahead and do coefficients here, um, this is what we get. So we have the corresponding coefficient for each class for class one quality three. And the wine quality four is located at position one. And of course, I know this because, you know, that's what the model told me right here. When I said the classes, as you can see, this is classes. And I think it's safe to assume that the order of the classes represent the order of our coefficients. Okay. So if I do this, um, let's call this coefficients two. So... Basically, um, this is a coefficient for each one of these features associated with the class 4. So now that we have our coefficients and our columns in kind of like a panda series, let's go ahead and create visualization to kind of see what it looks like to make it easier. I mean, this is an improvement to what we have above. But still, it's not doesn't make it very easy and clear. So let's go ahead and do map lib inline. And now um, we just do coefficient dot plot dot bar. Oh, actually, I want to sort the value dot sort values dot plots dot bar h. And I want the color to be red. Why not? I just like the color red. <laughs> so.
so actually adding this semicolon at the end remove um this object right here so we can see here that for a wine quality to be classified as a three um, this is how each one of these features makes an impact in classifying a wine quality as three and as you can see right here okay so this is um, vastly different from um, this right here for like a wine to be classified as a four this is how each one of these features makes an impact on that decision so uh, this that's kind of one way to explore your coefficient and kind of work with it and um, let me just create one more graph like nine is the highest wine quality so i'm kind of curious to see what the graph for a wine quality of nine is gonna look like and kind of see how um is what features will positively impact or negatively impact for a wine with that high of a quality value so basically um, we can see like the vast difference between something that has a wine quality of nine and something that has a wine quality of four you can see um the features that has a positive impact in like keep putting it in the nine um quality and then features that has a negative impact and like putting it in the nine quality right so you can kind of um, play around with this and extract what you want to extract but i'm just like making general tutorial of how to like explore your coefficient especially for a multi-class classification model so this is one technique for like exploring your uh, model and kind of explaining it and understanding it something else you can do to explore your model is by getting something called a classification report like getting the precision score the recall score and the f1 score of your model and in a different video i go into detail of how to get precision recall and f1 score but in this video i just give you a quick overview of how to do it so to get the precision recall and f1 score for your model you just do from sklearn.metrics import classification report and then um, you just do print classification report this is the true value which is our y test and this is our predicted value and when i did the ridge classify classification model i stored the predicted models in this variable And as you can see right here, um, this gives you the precision score, the recall score, and the F1 score. And it also gives you the accuracy. And like I said earlier, in a different video, I go into detail about this. And it gives you the precision recall and F1 score for like each class. If this is information that's important to you, you can go ahead and get that information from here. You can also get the precision recall and F1 score from like a confusion matrix. And of course, in a different video, I show you how to create a confusion matrix and I go into details about that. But in this video, I'll just give you a quick overview of a confusion matrix. So this right here is um, the confusion matrix for our ridge classifier model. And this is the predictive value and this is the actual value. And you can calculate um, the precision, the rate on the F1 score from this confusion matrix if you want to do that. This right here is basically saying for the class 6, 439 times the value was actually 6 and the model predicted it to be 6. 192 times the value is actually 7 but the model predicted it to be 6. So that's what um, this confusion matrix is saying. And it's saying for like nine times the model was actually seven, but it was predicted to be five. And again, in a different video, I go into detail of what a confusion matrix is, how to build it, and all that stuff. But yeah, these are just a few techniques that you can use to explore your ridge classification model. And if you're doing a multi-class classif classification problem like this, you're going to have multiple coefficients. And this is how to interpret this coefficient with the corresponding classes. 
but if you are doing a binary classification, you are only going to have one set of coefficients. And um, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com and from here you can click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get um, to this page. From this page, you can get access to today's notebook. I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blog posts and I just find it easier and straightforward to take all my resources and put it in one platform. So if you go here, you get access to my data science notebooks, including the one that I use in today's video. And the link to get that is machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blog posts. And as time goes by, I'm going to create more and more data science blog posts. And from this page, you can also go to free data science resources from here. And again, this is where you can find the notebook for today's video. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like it, but you made it this far in this video, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.